So now we're going to walk through a little bit of the menu structure as it's related to the 3800 positioner series. Um, you're going to see right now we've got a supply pressure low alarm. We took pressure off so that uh, basically it wasn't loud while we're going through this. So if we push the up button, we'll be taken into the menu. So each of these can be moved up and down with the arrows here and then entered into using the middle button. So for status, we can see that we're going to get a bunch of different information. So the uh, milliamp signal, the command percentage, the position. As we hit other things, you'll see the temperature, the different pressures, see different things here that are based on the benchmarks and the initial calibrations. You'll see the number of cycles, the valve travels, all these different things. Um, what's going on with the different analogs, the digitals. So really just everything that you'd want to know about where you're at, um, you can do through that. To get out of this one, we push the middle button. The alerts and alarms section. So here you can see current alarms, which is basically, in this case, we're going to see supply pressure low, as well as position deviation as we're giving it a 75% signal. To get out of that, we just push the middle button again. Here's the event history. The event history will show us different conditions that have occurred over the, the history of this positioner. So it does keep 32 different events. They're all stamped with the internal clock. So whether or not the DCS records it, you can see these different events that have happened and basically keep up with things relative to this positioner as they've occurred in the field. For instance, if someone says, no, I haven't touched it, and you can go back through and see that we've done a calibration, you can very quickly determine that, yes, in fact, the unit was um, calibrated, and that story may or may not add up. Um, you can see the different alarms, events, etc., and it just gives us a much better sense of what has happened to the unit. So partial stroke testing, um, there are many industries where this is important, so you can do it straight from here. Uh, tuning response, so there's different ways that you can tune the positioner to respond to changes. The calibration, um, this one's a little unique in that it gives you a bunch of different calibration signals and different ways to do either a quick cow or a full cow. Booster tuning, this section is for um, the, those accessories to make sure that the valve as a system operates it to its optimum potential. The configuration, so this one gives us a lot of different things um, relative to characterization, pressure control, etc. Um, there are a lot of different things that will give you um, alarms based on these setup. Um, feedback things, so it just, it really does give us a lot of, um, a, a lot more flexibility in terms of setting up the actual positioner, whereas before really everything you'd have to do had to be done through um, a handheld. Um, for instance, a very similar one under user preferences, um, we've got the different units, so if I needed to change, you know, something from a unit that uh, is um, imperial and change it to metric, we can do all that through here. So this auxiliary input output, um, that gives us quite a bit of different things. So we have analog out, analog in, digital one, digital two. So let's look at one of these digitals, for example. Um, we can give different alarms based on different conditions. So if you want to know, is a valve actually showing shutoff? Do we have critical alarms? Do we have, you know, good power? Um, you know, and then change the state of it naturally. All these things can be configured just from here. And these are coded right on there. And again, we have the um, spring terminals for each of those digital outs.
Um, again, a language change. So if you do have multilingual people working in your facility, there is a way to change that. Just remember it's option nine. Um, the display itself, there are some options depending on, you know, contrast and backlighting, how you want it to react. Um, so it, it, it just really is a preference of how you want to make it happen. Um, if you have a valve mounted in different directions, you can, um, and the valve's upside down, we can rotate that LCD to where it'll display the other direction. Or on a rotary valve, you could have it to where it was facing, uh, if it was on top of the actuator, and it, the controls are more easily accessed from one side or the other, you could use it in that case as well. So really that's all there is to these menus, but it does give us a lot of flexibility versus many of the other positioners on the market in terms of configuration and diagnostics right here on the interface using the LCD. So hopefully that will continue to help make maintaining and um, operating your valves in the field much simpler and keep reliability up.